Rob Flax here. I play things with strings, I hit stuff, and I sing. And I'm excited to share with you that I have finally leveled up my violin itself. Not actually the violin itself though, although I recently did get it clean, which is nice. I leveled up this part. I have been using, for the last over 10 years, this bow. This is a carbon fiber bow made by Jean Paul. Jean Paul? You see that on the frog there? I don't think it'll be in focus, but oh, it's totally never gonna be in focus. Oh, rats, okay. I'll hold it here at the focus point and try and zoom in. <laughs> this is a John Paul Avanti, and it's it's seen some things. This served me well. I bought it when I was a student at Denison University because my previous bow was kind of a subpar bow. It was made of Pernambuco, but didn't have the control I wanted. And at the time, I was either too caffeinated or hadn't practiced enough, and I had problems with bouncing bow. So this bow helps me stay on the string. And it needs some rosin. <laughs> very good at staying on the string, in part because it's kind of heavy and isn't so springy, which served me very well. Except if I was trying to play things like the uh, end of Jean-Luc Ponty's tune, New Country. I can almost pull it off with this bow and it became sort of a good test for the rate limiting factor of my technique. How fast can I play those 16th note triplets off the string? With this bow, not a chance. It's, well, barely a chance. I'm working really hard to get it happening. But recently, I have upgraded. Oh, this bow is my new bow, and I am stoked. This is made by an American maker named Rodney Moore. And uh, the stamp is kind of impossible to show on camera here because it's it's on the wood of the stick just underneath the hair here. <laughs> Many of his other bows are stamped in other places. I first met this bow when I was an instructor at Fiddle Hell, the annual gathering in Westford, Massachusetts. Definitely check that out. I believe we're in person again this November, fingers crossed. So fiddlehell.com.org. Put it on screen. There's the link. <laughs> I was teaching at Fiddle Hell, a lot of fun, and uh, one of the vendors who comes down every year is Jonathan Cooper, the legendary luthier who has a shop up in Portland, Maine. So John was down and he had a bunch of stuff on sale. This was one of the things. Now at the time, I was not in a position to buy a new bow, but Bruce Molsky was, and Bruce bought this bow. Ever since, I have seen Bruce Every time I've seen him, I've asked, so how's that bow treating you? <laughs> well, last summer, when I was performing at the Hoot Festival up in upstate New York, um, happened to encounter Bruce, who was there watching and hanging out. We got to see Levin de Nord perform, which was lovely. And uh, I asked Bruce again, how's my bow? I mean, how's that bow treating you? <laughs> and he, after much cajoling, agreed to sell me the bow. So now I have this bow and uh, I want to just play for you as an A-B comparison so you can hear how good this sounds. That's not necessarily going to translate because I've worked really hard for over a decade with that Jean-Paul bow to sound pretty good. What you can't tell on the video is how good this feels, but you will hopefully be able to hear a tonal difference. I'm just going to play some excerpts that I usually play to test things out. I'm going to play <clears throat> A, two octave G major scale, and then slide. I'm gonna play some Grappelli-esque version of Picture in a Frame by Tom Waits, and then I'm gonna play some bluegrass. And I might try and end with that Ponty lick. So here we go. This is my old bow.
almost. Okay, so if I had warmed up more, if I had been practicing several more hours a day for the last five days, I would have nailed that lick, right? <laughs> I have beat myself up for so long about not being able to play that. Nubo. That was so much easier. Okay, let's play the same excerpts. Okay, so it turns out I still need to practice. This bow, to my ears, sounds better, it feels better, there's crispness, there's clarity, it just feels easier to use. Now, I do still have to put in the work to get to learn how to drive it. This thing feels like a Ferrari, and you can't just drive a random Ferrari. You need to, like, go on a track and practice how to handle this. Its steering is so much more instantaneous, but uh, I need to put in the hours. To, uh, to really be able to drive it effectively. <laughs> Before I bought this bow from Bruce, I watched a video from Arcus Bows, a great company that makes really high-end carbon fiber bows, and uh, the owner was demonstrating how he tests a bow back and forth to see the comparison, to, to, to notice the tonal difference. And the point he made in that video, I'll link to this video, by the way, um, in the description below. Um, the point he makes is that you really should test only a few notes and only on one string at a time, you're much more likely to hear the tonal difference. So let's do that now. I'm gonna play back and forth between the Jean-Paul Avanti and the Rodney Moore bow. And just a couple notes at a time, back and forth. Right away it feels richer, brighter, clearer. It's night and day. Can you hear the difference? It's a clear winner to my ears at least, it's really a noticeable difference in the tone quality, but leave a comment, can you tell the difference? Now, one of the things I discovered earlier this year when I was A-Bing these in an electric context is it matters a little bit less. When you're plugged in and using the pickup, you may not be able to tell the difference. Also, in a rock and roll band, having a carbon fiber bow where the tip is metal and not gonna break if I smash it into things, might be an advantage. So this is not going away. It still sounds and feels really good. And if you're looking for a pretty good carbon fiber bow at a reasonable price, I do recommend John Paul Avanti. I've used this for years without issue. It's pretty great. I just really like that this upgrade is so nice. It's so nice. It's so nice. <laughs> so leave a comment. Could you hear a difference? Did you prefer the sound of this one better? Did I spend too much money for no reason and this was fine all along? Let me know what you think. All right, 
That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.